Hello, good day. Welcome to Illustrating in Academics, Inkscape Tutorial 1. First, we start with the very basics, the differences between bitmaps versus vector graphics. We need to master this if we want to produce good-looking figures, posters, and illustrations for our work. Who are we? We are in search, a group of African scientists who came together with the aim of increasing the amount of hands-on training in African universities. We regularly intermediate expertise, equipment, and other know-how for African universities. Meet us if you are interested. Why Inkscape? We use Inkscape because it is the open source equivalent of many vector graphic programs, which is what we should use if we want to make figures, posters, or illustrations. First, we would like to know what the difference is between bitmaps and vector graphics. But before we go there, we want to go to the website of Inkscape and download it. It works for all computer platforms. And there's enough documentation on the website of Taf Chong Ba, who, by the way, has a red feather from the Bansok Palace. You may go there from time to time to get details about the program and how you can do some cute things with it. Next, to start, we want to write down the things we can use Inkscape for. We can use it for figures, cartoons, posters, and so on. And these are the things you want to use them for to get good quality. Why Inkscape? We use Inkscape because it's a vector graphic program, again, as has been said before. The traditional way to do figures has been to produce them in something like PowerPoint, saving them as JPEG or any kind of image, and then exporting them. But this is a trap. Don't do it. To know the differences between bitmaps and vector graphics and why we shouldn't save images and use them for figures, we draw something in Paint Shop which is a bitmap program in Microsoft Word. Let's say we open Paint Shop and we write something like bitmap. When we write that, we save it uh, somewhere where it is accessible, like on our desktop. And after saving it, we are going to look at what happens when we zoom in and out. When we are at low resolution, the writing looks perfect, but as we zoom in, we notice that there are squares of pixels around the writing. So this is very low resolution. And this is not what you want to use for an illustration or a figure. For a figure or illustration, you want to use a vector graphic program. So let's see the difference when we use a vector graphic program to produce something. We use Inkscape. We want to draw spiral, a spiral or any kind of thing you want to draw, anything of your choice. And as we zoom in, we notice that the resolution is staying faithful to what we had from the onset. So not that this hasn't got pixels, but the pixels are tied down to vector paths so that each zooming in keeps the resolution true to its original size. So this is definitely something you want to use for figures and posters because you're always going to have a good resolution no matter how much you zoom in and out. A low re resolution is not a problem, but as you zoom in and out, you're going to see vectors surpass bitmaps. This can be done with programs like Inkscape, which is free, and the other commercial siblings. When you save such a diagram and you go inside, you notice that there are actually vector coordinates which have been produced, allowing for easy editing and easy zooming in and out of the figure without loss of any resolution. Next, we will borrow from a video of Professor Jan Lovichak of the University of Bielefeld and quickly write down the differences between bitmaps and vector graphics. And uh, we do that pretty quick. And after doing that, we are going to see what great difference there is between the two. So we go on. And 
we are soon finishing by doubling that last line and taking it down. Don't worry about this, you'll know about the techniques later on as we go on. So on the left hand side you have bitmaps that can be images or screenshots with formats like JPEG, PNG, BNP, TIFF. And uh, there are vectors on the right hand side which will produce in the case of Inkscape SVG or scalable vector graphics. And uh, this cannot easily port well onto Windows Office, my Open Office or LibreOffice, but they could port well into things like LaTeX. And for those who will be interested later, we will do LaTeX. And this can port through PDF, which by the way is a vector program too, which can be easily read by LaTeX. The other format will be WMF, EMF, EPS, which can easily port into Windows Office, Open Office and LibreOffice. So those are the basic differences and the basic formats. And you have to bear this in mind if you're producing figures, posters and illustrations and using them on other software. So when you download Inkscape and you open it, you will notice that you have a page showing and what you want to do is to go into the preferences and try to increase the amount of time the program is saved. And when you do this, you have to create a path on your desktop or anywhere of your choice where your drawings will be temporarily safe. And you can copy this one here and modify it for your uh, computer. And this is so because Inkscape is uh, not stable for some uh, platforms. So you want to be sure about that so that when the program crashes, you have a more recent version of your program. The next thing you want to know is that when you open Inkscape and you go to document properties, you are able to see the different kind of paper formats you use and you can toggle between units like inches, pixels and millimeters. And that is all a matter of personal preference. The next thing is that when drawing, you can use guidelines to guide you to exactly how you want the thing to look, what size you want it to be later on, on your piece of paper. And I personally prefer to use guidelines, but some people prefer not to use anything. Uh, some use the guideline of the paper uh, or the borders of the paper, and some just like to draw in the wild and then eventually scale down to the size they want. It's a matter of choice. I would like to thank Professor Yon Lopichak uh, most of the things borrowed from his videos from this site and he was helpful in teaching me how to make these videos. I'll see you the next